One of the things that was interesting about Levy was that he had extraordinary charm, intelligence, talent, could convince people to follow him, was easily antagonistic, and all of those weapons were going on, but inside of him, he was a person of trauma because he witnessed two incredibly witnessed one and learned about the other of two very violent things that happened when he was very young, which left him without any equipment to process that. So all of his strengths that he's evolved as a human being are built on top of damage. They aren't, they aren't coming from a place of, of security or love or, or confidence. They are piled on top of trauma that he has not recovered from, nor could he in many respects recover from because it happened before he had any equipment. It happened to him when he was a very vulnerable, still being formed human being. And also one of the dynamics that I think was at play with him was this belief that what he knew, which is I think very common when you're in your 20s, you know, and even though the character is 32, you know, is, is this belief that what you know is enough. When, when you go charging forward, believing that you know enough to, to get you in and out of every single situation. So you go forth boldly and with this exaggerated sense of confidence, you know, believing that you have it all. And so therefore, when you are in the presence of people who have information and you are feeling incredibly exaggeratedly confident that you think you have enough, what ends up happening is that you push away information. Y'all back up and leave Levy alone. Oh, come on, <laughs> Levy. We was all just having fun. Yeah. Toledo ain't said nothing about you. He ain't said about me. You just taking it all wrong. <laughs> ain't meant nothing by it. Levy? Levy got to be Levy. And you don't need nobody messing with him about the white. <laughs>
because of the technology, because of the, the spotlight, the art spotlight, that little thing which I love, it took me forever to find one that was functioning. And, and in this case, you're seeing a beginning of a dynamic between Levy and Dusty May, and you're also seeing the difference of, if you will, a blues artist versus a jazz artist. And Levy is a jazz artist. And so he's riffing on what the music is, is doing. And because of his ego, when he feels a piece of music coming inside of him, he's going to claim downstate. And, and it's, it's very specific and very revealing of who he is as a character and, and the kind of ego he has. And he's doing the ultimate spin because everybody else is background. Everybody else is a pimp, is, is the pimp. And, and, and Ma Rainey is Gladys Knight. So, so that's the way that works. And so hopefully by the end of this, this sequence, you know all the power dynamics that are at play. It was very interesting because at one point, Levy reveals a scar. And, 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 and he spent a lot of time talking about sharing a secret and the consequences of what happens to you when you share a secret that very few people know. I remember that conversation very specific. And, and anytime we would talk about that moment where he opens up his shirt and he goes to start, we, we would always spend a lot of time just talking about that moment, which, I, which, was, which was really fascinating. And this um, notion of charm and talent is enough. When you come into contact with a very crude, but at the, sometimes at the very sophisticated mechanisms of racism, that with charm and talent, you can shatter the opposition. And that's just fundamentally not true, but he believed that to his core. He has scenes where his guts uh, are being ripped out when he's telling the story of what happened to his parents when he's cursing God. He said to me very specifically, he said, that scene is one of the hardest scenes for me because, because Levy doesn't allow himself to act from his authentic emotion, which is rage. Urban summers are horrifying. New York City, you know, in August when it's 90 degrees still at, at, at midnight, you know, during the day you can see the heat. And, and that was one of the conversations that, the, that I had with the VP. I want to be able to see the heat and that equation of the heat, how it lives on the actor's body, how, what it's doing to their internal emotional makeup. So, so just shifting the season just had a huge impact on a whole series of decisions that involved, you know, you know, the actors as well as the DP, as well as the production designers, blah, 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 blah. So yeah. I don't know if I would have discovered any of that if I was operating from, oh my God, I have to stand in reverence of August. No, let me respect him and let me dig inside and figure out what I can do, how I can animate and excavate and discover the, the script from a moment to moment to moment understanding and then the visual landscape that would go along. But I wanted to craft the space so it, was, it, it felt like a boxing ring. So there were four posts there. And so that therefore anytime anybody, they all come together in the middle to play the music. But when the music isn't playing, you, there's a power dynamic because of Levy and his ambition and generally directed at Cutler. So that therefore the language, I wanted the language to crackle and, 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 and to fly like it's, it's a series of punches and death. Well, what is you doing, nigga? You're talking all them highfalutin ideas about making a better world for the color, man. What is you doing to make it better? And, 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 and so, so we're watching a series of rounds of a boxing match between these guys before, before Ma shows up. And once Ma shows up, she turns each of her scenes into a chess match where it's strategy and it's agenda. And it's figuring out what the other person is doing and figuring out when she needs to do what she needs to do to end the conversation. Oh, that's all right. I already told you what to do. What I care about what you and Cutler do. Go on and fire me. I don't care. I'm going to get my own man anyway. You keep messing with me. Ain't nobody studying you. All right, nigga. You fired. One of the things that Viola and I talked about very early on, which, which I thought she was so smart about, she's so smart about so much, you know, she talked about the wear and tear of having to defend yourself 
all the time as a woman, as a black woman. And regardless of how good you are at it, it's exhausting. <laughs> it's just exhausting. 